Aloha and welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Women's History Month in March is an ideal time to celebrate the brave, bold, and fearless women who have influenced history. The important role women have played in shaping our nation and the world can often be overlooked, whether in the fields of science, politics, environment, legal, and the arts. Sequoia Carr Brown is an international performance artist and founder of an award-winning company, Strange Fruit Express. The community-based company creates immersive, mixed-media production and workshops. Their engaging projects are intended to inform and empower communities through creative culture arts. Sequoia Cara Brown, welcome to Sister Power. Aloha and thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. How are you, Queen? I am absolutely wonderful. How are you, Queen? I'm feeling absolutely fabulous, fabulous, yes, fabulous. Yes. And I'm so happy to have you here. You know, for years, Sequoia, I've been watching you perform with our wonderful friend, Dr. Catherine Takara, and I've seen several of your performances. How long have you been performing professionally? Professionally, over 30 years. Well, you look 30. Well, thank you. <laughs> the power of dance. Okay. And being positive and empowered and who you are as a person and knowing your culture. I give uh, credit to that. Um, and thank you for mentioning, mentioning my dear mentor, Dr. Catherine Waddell Takara. She's helped me navigate through the gauntlet of uh, the uh, academic systems here. And uh, I could not have matriculated well without her. Oh, great, great. Well, tell us about your company, Strange Fruit Express. Yes, yeah, so Strange Fruit is a project uh, that started out as my uh, business plan for my interdisciplinary studies pro uh, program at the University of Hawaii, where, uh, again, Professor uh, Waddell Takara was my mentor and advisor. Uh, so I was a history major and I was coming against a lot of uh, pushback for um, incorporating the African-American experience uh, within American history. Uh, so my contention was and still stands is that uh, black history is American history and uh, I could not matriculate with all the pushback and the, the negative feedback I was receiving from my papers, so I switched to interdisciplinary studies and uh, used that program that I developed and fused three majors, uh, American history, modern dance, and fine art. And I fused that into my business plan to launch Strange Food Express after I graduated. And it's basically a, a performance art installation-based uh, company that tells our history, American history, with those unsung heroes, particularly African Americans and women. Um, and I tell it through a fun way, uh, educational way, with uh, dance and fine arts. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And so you were talking about uh, American history. Mm -hmm. A black history is American history. Yes. What, elaborate about the African American experience and how to resiliently navigate through the system. How do we navigate through the system? Well, uh, for me, I find it's very crucial to understand our amendments uh, because basically if you, the, the formula stands that if you are not straight, white, male, Christian, non-Catholic, you have to be amended into uh, our, our country to have your rights to be recognized. And even so with that, uh, it may not be, it may be on the books, but it may not be in the hearts and minds of the people in general. So what do you do for that? How do you navigate through implicit uh, systems that are designed to oppress and marginalize? So that's where Strange Fruit Express comes in. I put a positive, positive spin on my work. Um, I helped uh, people to see that you do not have to be put in a 
a box. You do not have to be these tropes that are set to stigmatize us, um, to design to keep us from uh, looking forward and being positive. So I create workshops. Uh, art installations that illuminate us, uh, bring forth those uh, unsung heroes that helped us to, uh, to make it through, to revere our ancestors, to be proud of them. And uh, with that, I think uh, you find within, within your mind, body, and spirit a, a positive light, a way to shine, to move on up. And uh, I love doing it. I find that people uh, who experience my work feel that empowerment and uh, that's what it's all about it ripples through the community it's not all about looking at the past and staying in the past it's about looking at it understanding it feeling proud and understanding what our people went through and then moving forward in like an afrofuturist kind of perspective i love it I mean, I yes can see you're dancing now thank you're you you're also <laughs> your director creator yes. performer collaborate Co collaboration of live performance installation. Explain that to our viewers about your dance and how do you weave in and out and get your message to the audience? Well, uh, I like to research a topic, say uh, maybe I want to explore the American flag. Uh, I have a piece called American Me. Okay. Uh, I explored what were the, the meanings of the colors of our flag. Uh, unofficial meaning, red is valor, white, purity and innocence, blue, perseverance and justice. So I'd, I would look at that and I would question, okay, so what is it to be an American? What is a patriot? Uh, what do these, co these colors mean and are we truly living up to them historically and do they apply to all the people that represent our nation? Uh, I found that not necessarily. Sometimes yes, other times no. So uh, I would create a piece in this particular uh, piece, American Me, I used the form of movement Buto, which is a Japanese form of movement. Um, to express the spirit of trying to uh, navigate through uh, implicit biases, uh, the oppressive systemic uh, elements of American society, and to keeping in mind those colors and showing that, hey, I am, we are Americans too. Um, the base of that piece, American Me, also has uh, African artifacts in the downstage space of that piece where, uh, uh, Valor, for example, has an African sword. Uh, Innocence has an Akuba doll. Um, Justice uh, has uh, cowrie shells, which represents the economic injustices that we uh, experience, but, want, but at the same time, we have so much economic power. We spend trillions of dollars into this economy, and uh, cowrie shells were uh, a form of currency once upon a time in Africa. So just kind of bringing back the Black Wall Street 2.0 element of empowering and showing that we can flip this. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I take the, the trouble with it, the dynamics of it is that trying to, all this information that I have about American history and trying to condense it to a clear, concise message uh, without preaching is the trick. Well, and, but I love it. Oh, good. Well, you can tell through your, through your dance and we can feel your emotion. It definitely, definitely transcends to the audience. Let's talk about Pico Dance Arts. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, Pico Dance Art, uh, I enjoy uh, collaborative projects of fellow artists and uh, Pico Dance Arts uh, was founded by uh, uh, Sammy Elia Kune, uh, Jalak Karen Miller and myself. Uh, we are international performance artists uh, who wanted to uh, bring, we're from Hawaii and we wanted to uh, bring uh, the hearts and audiences uh, locally and internationally with a variety of quality performances and shows. Um, sometimes they have messages, other times not. Uh, we've performed in uh, Portier, France. We've uh, performed in Seoul, Korea. Uh, the topic in Seoul, Korea was climate change. We performed in uh, uh, 
what was formerly uh, oil tanks in the 70s and uh, they converted them into these beautiful cultural arts centers. So our piece, Slow Awakening, was all about addressing that. How do we fit in with this climate change? How do we, can we change ourselves and then resonate through the community in being more mindful about uh, uh, helping our climate, helping our planet, helping one another? That's wonderful. Yeah. You know, I received Sequoia an email today from Wallet Hub uh, Best Award. And let's talk a little bit about activism. And it's out of Washington, D.C. And it's a Hawaii was named 2020's Best State for Women. Mm. I mean, I love that we live here. The Queens yes. live here. Yes. And now this is something so very positive mm -hmm. for people to think about that we have so many sharp, brilliant uh, minds who live here in Hawaii. Oh, we and do. now yes. we're noted as one of the safest places for women to live here. Tell me about just a few of your experiences of living here in Hawaii. Uh, well, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, I find Hawaiian culture, the people to be much socially, much more socially mature than uh, mainland culture. Um, I am originally from Chicago, but I am Kama'aina now, over 20 years, resident, UH graduate. Uh, but uh, I find that I can let my guard down more here. I don't have to have, like when I lived in Chicago, that uh, street sense, you know, being streetwise and uh, being conscious of 360, kind of looking around and uh, making sure I'm safe. Um, I don't have to do that necessarily so much here. Uh, I enjoy that I can speak to most people without having uh, some kind of preconceived idea about who I am. I'm learning and found that uh, here in Hawaii, if you say who you are and what you are, you kind of kind of people kind of just sit back and wait and see because the social circles are so small here, right? And if you don't uh, understand and gather that sense of aloha, right? And uh, get the way things work here socially and being connected to the aina and all of that, that uh, people will see you for who you truly are. Yeah, they do. I, I, uh, I enjoy living here. Mm -hmm. But we don't want people to think that we don't have challenges here. I mean, yes. we live in a world, we, this is a 50th state. Mm -hmm. We have uh, concerns and uh, we air and, and air and discuss them here. Yes. And this is why Sister Power is here. We're so happy to have you. And I want to ask you, Sequoia, what are some of the components of your live performances? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, my motto, my tagline is uh, Strange Fruit Express, history, art, dance, and activism in mind, body, and spirit. So uh, I like to take those elements of mixed media. Uh, Buto, modern are my based in terms of uh, movement, and then art, surrealism is my kind of my thing, modern art, um, and creating projects and pieces that resonate the message of uh, include, inclusion, uh, positivity, bring us all together as Americans. Wow, thank you. Oh, I'm looking, we're looking at some of your beautiful yes, work, your art form. Some of those works yeah. were formerly, I was formerly with Iona Contemporary Dance Theater where I learned some of my Bhutto uh, movement, um, but primarily I am learning through uh, uh, Lori Otani from the Japanese Cultural Center. Um, I've been studying with her for four years. She's a true Bhutto, original, traditional style. And I thank her so much for grounding me in that. Oh, wonderful. Well, stay with us. We'll be right back. Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests 
who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, and our very special guest, we have Queen Sequoia Carr Brown, and we're discussing history, dance, and activism. And before we went to break, we were talking about your di different mini forms of, of dancing, and, and I just love watching you tell your story. So who is the target audience for Pico Dance Arts? Uh, Pico, uh, everyone. Uh, we are all inclusive. We are all, all about uh, bringing our work, our message of um, positivity and uh, community-based uh, kind of uh, projects to everyone. Uh, we are, of course, here in Hawaii, but we do work internationally and have been invited to various uh, dance festivals um, because of that. Uh, but we, yeah, we're, we don't limit ourselves at all. Uh, our most recent piece, uh, Raw Lineage, uh, we, it was kind of a heavy piece. We were addressing uh, those social ills, uh, those unspoken uh, instances of uh, some kind of uh, oppression, racism, sexism, gender identity issues. Um, walking on eggshells is the overarching arcing term or uh, title of that concept. And uh, we wanted to bring it to light. You know, you can't heal until you bring it to the light. Uh, so we uh, produced and created this project in an uh, untraditional stage space, which is another element of PICO. We like to take it out of the stage, traditional stage space, and put it in unexpected areas. So we performed at Art Zone. Um, we graciously thank Kurt Kamenaka for that uh, opportunity to perform in that space. And uh, yeah, just address things that need to be said. And, but at the same time, make, uh, have our audience feel comfortable enough to feel safe enough that they can speak of it and understand and know that we have you, others in the community have you, and that you can be strong and move through those. I like that. Yeah. You know, March is Women's History Month. Yes. Tell me about one or two of your mentors. Who has impressed you or they have left a memorable imprint regarding your dancing? Like dancing, oh, well, there's... Or just in light period. We don't have to, we don't have to label it. Okay, well, being from Chicago, in my uh, first introduction to, to dance would be uh, Catherine Dunham. Oh, yes. Mm. And uh, I loved her anthropological element of uh, uh, bringing in the uh, African diaspora spiritual elements to movement. Uh, so that really resonates with me. Uh, also, Pearl Primus was similar like that. She's from Trinidad, um, not very well known, but she has anthropological elements to her work as well. Um, I also enjoy, uh, for my art, anything out of the Black Renaissance period. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Um, Afrofuturism greatly influences my work as well. Um, I love, I love, I love, I love all of it. So uh, I try to bring that, incorporate those you know, ancestral ties to my work. Uh, and But at the same time, have a spin where it propels us forward to be positive, to be empowered, to heal. Because like I said earlier, our uh, equality and justice may be on the books, but it's not necessarily into the hearts and minds of everyone that we have to live with. So I'm at a place now where I don't care not if, if not everyone loves us, wants us to be reach our full potential, but I am out there, my company is out there to reach those who, who need that glimmer of hope, that can see the light at the end of the tunnel, want to see that light at the end of the tunnel, tunnel. and I am there, my company is there. Uh, to help to bring you to that light. I, I love that. Yes. Well, Sequoia, how does your past work inform your current project? Well, um, the thread of my work is uh, my core foundational piece, Constructed Red, White, and Blue. 
And uh, again, that touches on that American me piece of uh, exploring the meanings of the American flag. Uh, all of my pieces also has an element of reflection, uh, a mirror, if you will. So it's to show that I not am only am I telling the story of others and helping trying to get the general public to see us for who we truly are, the beautiful people that we are, um, but that I am struggling and working through it as well. Uh, so, uh, raw lineage, uh, I introduced a piece called Reverence, uh, part two of that piece, which is all about ancestor, uh, recognizing our ancestors and my mentors that helped me to get to where I am today, um, connecting the black economic element. Um, I had experienced and have experienced a great deal of uh, racism um, here on the islands in the past few years since returning from teaching in Japan and uh, I was really disappointed and shocked by that um, Number Why 40 were you disappointed and shocked? We well, I don't know America. if it's because of number 45 and the People's oh. White House right now and people are feeling a little bit more emboldened mm -hmm. uh, But it wasn't like that when I uh, first arrived uh, over 20 years ago as a student at U University of Hawaii and uh, uh and I'm finding even that it's not, it's even, it's just a constructed white kind of mentality. And it's not just white. You don't have to be white to be constructed in whiteness. So uh, I decided to put together Reverence Part 2 to uh, address that struggle that, um, and it's a cathartic kind of way to release um, these experiences that I've had since returning to the islands. Um, being followed around in stores, being called the N-word, not being served at a Japanese restaurant. Uh, and uh, I had a noose as the center of this stage space, but the noose was made out of um, $100 bills, you know, because it's all about the Benjamins. And uh, uh, that was to represent that, you know, we're going to flip this script. If you're going to have companies who want to exploit us through monetarily, then hold your money, boycott, keep your money in your pocket, keep it local, make it bounce at least five times in your own communities. Uh, bring back Black Wall Street 2.0, if you will. Um, and that center space I also had where the noose was uh, located uh, hanging. I had on the floor the words, uh, uh, black money matters and still we, we rise. Um, I would dance in that space by the accompaniment of uh, Aaron Aranita, a incredible jazz musician who played God Plus the Child by uh, Billie Holiday, by which my company's name, uh, the namesake is named after Strange Fruit. Um, so I'm all about taking these uh, concepts and elements and the thread is always empowerment. The thread is always exploring American history through the black experience, um, but using uh, U.S. constitutional history, exploring what the colors of the flag mean, you know, having mirrors within that space uh, to reflect not uh, only on the past, but where we are going, who we are as, who I am as a person, and who we are as a nation, and how do we move and progress forward. Oh, I like all of that. And all of that is so empowering and it's motivating and, and such a part we continue to educate people. So I have a two part question for you, Sequoia. Mm. Sequoia. And the first part is, um, what did I want to ask you? That you, you, you touched on something, oh, yes. What is Strange Fruit Express mission? Give us a quick 10 second uh, um, mission statement for Strange Fruit and then I'll ask you the second question. Our mission is to empower and uh, foster resiliency in all who experience our workshops, our performances, our collaborative projects. Uh, that's it, just empowerment and resiliency uh, in the mind and the body and the spirit. Uh, racism, sexism, all these isms are very, very uh, physiologically, uh, uh, they, they, they really bring you down. They, and I'm all about reversing that. You don't have to internalize that, mm -hmm. you know. So my work is all about bringing that information forward through art, through movement. I even have exercise programs, de-stress, decompressing stress projects, um, exercises that are designed to release the stress where we place that stress, you know, there's implicit biases, you know, we tend to 
we tense up in our face and our neck and our shoulders. I have a program to get rid of all of that. Well, I'm oh yes, Sisters in Park Hawaii and Sister Park. We're interested in talking about getting together to do that mm, program. Mm -hmm. So Sequoia, what's next? What are you doing next? Next, well, I am with along with Pico Dance Arts. We are uh, we just submitted some uh, proposals uh, for grants. Uh, we pray that those will come forward. And uh, I am currently, uh, I was invited by uh, Tao Dance Theater. Uh, Peter Espiritu is the director of this beautiful piece uh, called Indigenuity. Uh, it will be at Ferriton Theater on March 27th, 7.30 p.m. Buy your tickets now. It's an incredible, beautifully powerful piece about the, uh, connecting uh, to each other, to the planet, to one another, respecting indigenous rights, indigenous cultures and people. Um, please come out and see that. Um, I'm so honored to have been invited to be a part of that. And uh, I'm also teaching. I teach mixed ability. I'm a dance ability uh, certified instructor. So I work with people on the spectrum, um, Down syndrome, doesn't matter. Even, you know, we all have some kind of uh, uh, ability. Uh, so I call it handicapable crew. And we all work together regardless of your ability and have a good time learning creative movement. Oh, I love that. So March 27th, Mm -hmm. And it's at what time? March 27th at 7.30 p.m. And we're in the location? It is at Farrington Auditorium. Okay, Farrington Auditorium. Well, Sequoia, in 30 seconds or less, tell the audience something that we have not touched on that you would like to relay to uh, the people out there. Oh, what would you like to know? Well, just know that I am here for all of you. I am a global village personality. I love to live, love and learn and laugh and all of those thing, wonderful things in life. And just because uh, you see me here in my melanin, uh, I am not a trope, nor are my people. And we are here, we have always been here. And we all are about uh, growing, educating, living, being spiritual, being grounded, and just accept us, and we all accept you as well. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Sequoia, for joining Sister Power. And I want to urge every listening person out there to get out there and vote. Yes, it, vote, it, It's vote, crucial vote. to get out there and vote and celebrate Women's History Month today. Yes and the rest of the month, and always. Always. And again, I'm Sisters Empowering Hawaii, President and Founder, and the host of Sister Power, Oceans of Aloha, Peace and Love.